my uh, my entry point into this idea is to call your mind back to the fact that I introduced this sort of sort of new notation for you for talking about functions. You remember, I said you're going to see notation that looks like this, right? And that thing on the left hand side doesn't mean what we've trained you to think it means for the last um, four years, right? So normally when you see something outside brackets and there's all algebra, you would normally interpret that as like f times x, right? That's what we would normally say. But what we're describing here is actually quite different. f stands, of course, for function. f is just the name of the function. We could call it anything we like. And in fact, as you'll see in a minute, um, we're going to call it quite different names because we're going to deal with a whole bunch of these all together. The most common name for a function that you've seen in the past is y, right? We say y equals, and then we supply a function of x. What we mean by a function of x is that x is the variable you supply, right? This is the variable. So f is the name. This is the function's name. And then this itself, right? This is the function of x, right? You put x in, you get something out, right? So you evaluate this. And then you, like, ta-da, okay, I can add f of 5 or f of negative 1 or f of x plus 2. You can put anything you like into this function, okay? Now, when I first introduced this to you, I said the reason why is that once you've got this language, you can call, do cool new things with it. And uh, one of the first examples is what we're looking at this morning, which is odd and even functions. You can't really describe what these things are without this kind of language. So make a little subheading just underneath this, which is... Graph symmetry. Oops, not graphy. Graph symmetry. Now, I'd like you to think for a moment with me. And I want you to help me think of examples. You know you've got underneath your belt a whole bunch of different kinds of graphs, right? You've been doing this for years. And many of the graphs that you are familiar with have various kinds of symmetry to them. Um, some of them are complicated and some of them are simple. Can someone give me an example, any example you like, of a graph that you know, which has some kind of symmetry. Any take it? Yeah, sure. X equals Y. X equals y. <laughs> Do me a favor. Let's quickly draw, and these don't have to be large, just enough to get the picture. Let's draw this thing. Okay. X equals Y or Y equals X. Same deal, right? What does this look like? Well, it's just a straight line. And here, how would you describe it? These words. It passes through the origin, and what else can you tell me about it? What's the difference between this and, say, this? What's the gradient. difference? Gradient. The gradient is 1 in our case. So let's just slot that in there. Which, by the way, if you remember that m equals tan theta, if m is 1, then tan theta would give me this. So theta, of course, is 45 degrees. Fine. There's y equals x, x equals 1. It's got a kind of symmetry. How would you describe its symmetry? Yeah, Eric. It's symmetrical about y equals minus x. That's a good way to describe it. Let me repeat that just as much as you caught it. This line is symmetrical about y equals minus x, right? So if you just twist your head a little bit and look at it sort of at an angle, you can see, oh, this side is the same as that side. That's good. That's one way you could describe it. I'll come back to this guy in a minute because he's actually a very special case. Someone want to give me another example of a symmetrical function, yeah? Um, y equals x squared. Y equals x squared. Again, can you help me by drawing a little graph of this? Uh, you get the idea. Again, I will pose the question to you. What kind of symmetry does this particular graph have? It's different to the first one. How would you describe it in words? Someone hasn't said anything yet. Say it again. Okay, y equals zero is on this graph. Where is y equals zero? Y equals zero means vertically, you're not up, you're not down. You're just on the axis, right? That's y equals zero there, yeah? And y equals zero is clearly important to this graph, but it's not as important to the symmetry of this graph, right? Y equals zero actually doesn't describe anything about which way this graph is the same. 
That's by the way what the symmetry means, agreement in measurements, like synchronous, anyway. So if it's not y equals zero, there's another line that's very similar to this that also gives you a symmetry relationship. Where is it? It's x equals zero, right? That'll give it to you right there. In fact, let's just draw, draw that over the top. Okay, now, <laughs> just because I, I didn't plan this, you guys gave me the graphs, you had y equals x, y equals x squared, a natural progression would be x y equals x cubed, which also has symmetry and a different kind again. One last time, let's draw this uh, with a nice little graph. It doesn't have to be huge. Now, y equals x cubed. We know what y equals x cubed looks like, but we, we haven't drawn heaps of it. I will point out, it's very similar to one of the trigonometric graphs that you know. Y equals x cubed in its basic shape. Which trig graph would you compare it to? It's similar to tan. Similar though, with one crucial difference. Does anyone know what the primary difference between the two of them is? Okay, so tan x, obviously it has its, um, its asymptotes and it's stuck between there, unlike y equals x cubed, which just goes on forever. But it's actually something important that happens at the origin. Please note this. Y equals x cubed, you actually have to draw a little horizontal spot there at the origin and then it curves upwards. Right? In the same way, if you go to the left, you go for that horizontal bit, and then you curve <coughs> downwards. This is distinct to y equals tan x. We're not going to draw it, but how's it different at the origin? What's different? You see, this guy just kind of like comes up, he slows down, just pauses for a minute, and then he launches back off, right? Tan doesn't do that. Tan just blows straight through at an angle, at a 45 degree angle, in fact, which we'll explore in the next topic. So this is y equals x cubed. I think we can all agree it has symmetry, but it does not have the symmetry you described here. Think about it. It doesn't have the symmetry you described here either. Think for a moment. I'll come to you in a second. I just want you to think and look. By the way, I know it looks like that y equals x symmetry. It looks like it, but it's not. Can you see why it's not? If I drew in this um, y equals negative x line that Eric suggested for that line of there, which is perfect, right? Do you see you could not reflect it over and get the right shape? Do you see what happened? In fact, see this line here, it's going to do this. You see that? That's not what we'd want, right? It's not actually symmetrical in that way. It's close, but not quite. So what is the symmetry that this has? Okay, so we sort of implied this. No one said the word though, because we kind of view it as inherent to symmetry. These two kinds of symmetry here are what we call reflectional symmetry. Right? I think that's mostly what people think of when they say something is symmetrical. Right? They picture a butterfly, you just flip it over, or a mirror, you flip it over. Reflection. This is not reflectional symmetry. This is, it's got two words. Uh, you could call it, along with this, you can call it rotational symmetry. Shayan suggested that if we take the thing, and then we turn it 180 degrees, so there's no flipping happening, right? Take it in the same orientation and rotate it. If you rotate it around 180 degrees, you'll get the exact same shape back. But just like these two, right? Sorry, just like these two, you have to pick a place, right? Um, not just any line is good enough for the reflectional symmetry. There's a particular line at the origin, right? We say line symmetry, okay? In the same way, there's a particular place around which we rotate this, namely, the origin, there's one point. Let's just draw it on there. Okay. Because there's one point, it's not only called rotational symmetry, it's also called point symmetry. Now, um, it was interesting, you guys picked out y, x equals y first as a graph. x equals y is super extra special because you'll notice it has the reflectional symmetry that Eric pointed out at the beginning. But do you notice it also has rotational symmetry? Like you can take, take that guy, you can spin around 180 degrees, still works. So he has multiple forms of symmetry, that's why he's a bit unusual. Okay. Now, the two I want to highlight are actually <laughs> these two here, y equals x squared and y equals x cubed. We call these guys different kinds of symmetry. We in fact call this one um, even symmetry, or we call it, and because y equals x squared is a function, we say it is an even function. And this guy over here, we call it odd symmetry. Or, because y equals x cubed is a function, we call that, bless you, an odd function. Any takers, why do you think we call even symmetry 
even symmetry. You wanna have a stat bag? Because you get it when like the exponent of x You don't need to draw it, just imagine it. We could keep going, couldn't we? We stopped at x cubed. But you could do x to the 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. Okay? If you did x to the 4, in fact, I'm going to be lazy and put it on here. x to the 4 looks very similar to x squared. It actually looks like x squared, except if it's gained some weight. And it's like fat at the bottom. Okay, that's what x to the 4 looks like. You go chuck it to decimals if you like. Um, it does intersect at two crucial points. Can you guess what they are? Think about it. x to the 4. At x equals 1, 1 squared is the same as 1 to the 4. So it intersects, but then it goes higher. Why is that? Why do you think it gets steeper? Well, the power is higher, right? That means the numbers grow faster. Anyway, that's a bit of an aside. My point is, it has exactly the same symmetry that x squared has. And you can bet your bottom dollar that x to the 6 and x to the 60, anything with an even power will have even symmetry. 